hello friends today we are going to start new topic new chapter that is shear force and bending moment in beam this is also very important chapter the in our syllabus we have different sub topics in the shear force and bending moment in beams these are the some important topics from this chapter that is what is by axial force shear force and bending moment in the diagrams for statically determinate beams including beams with internal hinges for different types of loading relationship between rates of loading then shear force and bending moment these are the important topics from the shear force and bending moment in beams see in this chapter we will study the effect of forces applied transverse to the axis of the member which will produce bending in the member the study of such a forces is complicated because the loading effects vary from section to section of the beam this loading effect produces the shear force and bending moment across the section this chapter is limited to statically determinate beam that is the beam which can be analyzed directly from the equation of static equilibrium see what is mean by beam a horizontal structure a horizontal structural member supported along the length of length and subjected to load transferred to its longitudinal axis is called as beam see there are some different types of beams the first one that is simply supported beam another second overhang beam third one is cantilever beam and fourth one is continuous beam already you studied different types of beams in the engineering mechanics in the equilibrium chapter the chapter name was support reaction see here you can see simply supported beam this is the diagram for simply supported beam you can see this is your beam the beam which are just rest on its supports is called as simply supported beam you can see this this one is the first support this one is the second support in the beam it just rest on its supports is called as simply supported beam another type that is overhang beam you can see the beam whose end portion are extended beyond its supports either from one side or both side or it is called as overhang beam you can see here this one is your beam from this point to this the beam is overhang see in this diagram from this support to this side the beam is overhang from this point to towards right the beam is again overhang so this is single side overhang beam this one is double side overhang beam the another type that is cantilever you can see the cantilever condition the beam whose one end is rigidly fixed see you can see here this one end is rigidly fixed at the supports and the other end is free this end is completely free there is no any support it's called as cantilever beam you can see the continuous beam this one is your continuous beam the beam which is rest on more than two support is called as continuous beam see in the simply supported beam it was supported at end only means from here and from here and at point this but in the continuous beam you can see the beam is supported here at this point and at this point also this is the continuous beam 
see the different types of supports in the first year already you studied different types of supports like smooth contact surface support roller support hinge support fixed support so you can see the flexible that is cable support but here in the sfd and bmd we want following types of supports the first one that is roller support roller support has only one reaction which is always normal to the contact surface you can see this one is the roller support here you can see the rollers and you can see the reaction there is only one reaction and that is perpendicular to the surface that is a contact surface this r is perpendicular to contact surface if roller support is like this diagram then you can see this one is the contact surface and reaction there is only one reaction that is perpendicular to the contact surface another one that is hinge support hinge support has restriction to movement in x and y direction therefore it has two reactions that is rx and ry you can see in x direction there is a support reaction rx you can see the vertical that is ry so two reactions are there in the hinge support that is rx and ry third one that is fixed support you can see fixed support has restriction to move in x and y direction as well as rotation about that point it has three reactions vertical you can see this one is vertical this one is horizontal and one more important thing that is movement that is ma you can see first one is the horizontal then vertical and then movement means it has three reactions means two reaction and one movement see different types of loadings are there the first one that is concentrated or you can see the point load you can see in the diagram a load which is acted a point is called as a point load you can see this w is acting on this point so it's a point load already you studied in the first year another one that is uniformly distributed load you can see this is your beam support at this point and support at this point the length is given here you can see the uniformly distributed load is given that is w per unit length a load which is uniformly spread over the beam is called as uniformly distributed load it is called as udl equivalent point load is equal to intensity of load into length means if you will multiply this w per unit length into l you will get equivalent point load and it acts at a center of gravity of loading that is at a distance of l by 2 means whenever you will convert the given udl into equivalent point load you have to act at a distance from this point to l by 2 at a distance of l by 2 means at a center it will act and the intensity will be w into l you can see third type that is uniformly varying load you can say uvl the intensity of loading increase or decrease at a constant rate is called as uniformly varying load or you can say the triangular loading also see here from this point to this from this beam point to this beam point it is continuously increasing w per unit length is continuously increasing so the equivalent point load is equal to intensity of load into length so formula will be 
W L by two. See this area represents. This area represents the intensity of equivalent point load. You can consider this area height that is W per unit length. Length or you can say the base is given that is L. The formula for triangle that is one by two into W into L. So the formula for equivalent point load that is W L by two. And x at a CG of loading, that is at 2 L by 3, or you can say the L by 3. If you are considering from this side, then equivalent point load x will be here. From this point, the distance will be W L by. From this point, the distance will be 2 L by 3. And from this side, from larger side. From this point to distance will be L by three. The equivalent point load will act here. We will see in the problem also. And what is mean by shear force? The shear force at a cross section of a beam is defined as the algebraic sum of all the unbalanced vertical forces, either left or right of the section. You can say. Shear force is equal to summation of F Y left on the section is equal to summation of F Y right on the section. Here you can see summation of F Y in bracket so L sum of the all vertical forces on the left of the section that is summation of F Y L. Here you can see. Summation of F Y R is nothing but sum of all vertical forces on the right on the section. See sign convention of shear force that is very very important. An upward force to the left of section or downward force to the right of section will be considered as a positive shear force. You can see in this diagram. This is upward direction. at left it is upward at right it is downward so this will be the positive shear force another one when the force is downward to the left side of the section and upward on the right section will be considered as a negative shear you can see here the force is acting towards downward this one is the section x x is the section it is acting downward and at right side it is acting upward so this one will be the negative shear force this is the sign convention for shear force these are the important points one more important point that is axial force the axial force at the cross section of a beam is defined as the algebraic sum of all the horizontal axial forces either left or right of the section this is your axial force so what is mean by bending moment you are aware with the moment moment is nothing but force into perpendicular distance but here the concept is bending moment most of the time they are asking in the university what is mean by sagging and hogging moment in bending moments and also they are asking its sign conventions you can see this is the university question the bending moment at any cross section of the beam is defined as the algebraic sum of moment of all the forces either left or right of the section see bending moment is nothing but sum of moment of all the forces on the left of, of the section or you, or you can say sum of Movement of all the forces on the right of the section. So you can see the bending moment is equal to formula B M is equal to summation of sum of you can say sum of moment of all the forces on the left of the section. That is summation of 
MFL. Here you can see the summation of MFR. You can see the sign convention for a bending moment. You can see here, this one is a section. This one is the bend bar. Left side is given and right side is also given. Here you can see at left it's a clockwise, at right it's the anti-clockwise direction. Here at left it's a clock anti-clockwise, at right it's a clockwise. Both points are very important. Sagging bending movement when the clockwise movement on the left of the section or anti-clockwise movement on the right of the section is considered as a positive bending movement or sagging bending movement. You can see this. This is a clockwise movement on the left. Anti-clockwise movement at a section of her, at section at right side. Upward forces on either side of the section of the beam tends to bend the beam so that produce coexivity above the center line is called as sagging bending movement. When you can see hogging bending movement, when the anti-clockwise movement on the left side of the section so you can see this one is the x-axis section. When the anti-clockwise movement on the left side of the section or clockwise movement on the right of the section is considered as a negative bending movement. Or you can see the hogging bending movement. You can see the condition. This one is a anti-clockwise at left side and clockwise at right side. Downward forces on either side of the section of a beam tends to bend so that produced con con concavity above the center line is called as hogging bending movement. You can see the diagram. Sagging and hogging concept is very important while solving the problem. Now, shear force and bending movement diagram. First one, shear force diagram. The shear force obtained analytically are representing by plotting shear force as coordinate y-axis against the position of a cross section as x-axis. The diagram obtained is called as shear force diagram. I will show how to draw the diagram. Now, next, axial force diagram. The axial force obtained analytically are representing by plotting axial force as ordinate y-axis against the position of cross-section x-axis. The diagram obtained is called as axial force diagram. So what in the bending moment diagram? The bending moment obtained analytically are represented by plotting bending moment as a ordinate y-axis against the position of cross section as x axis the diagram obtained is called as bending moment diagram see important point in the sfd and bmd that is point of contra flexure or you can say the point of inflection see it is the point at which the bending moment diagram changes its sign generally Bending moment at this point is equal to zero. Or you can see it is definitely occurs in case of overhang beam within supports. Point of contra fixture is calculated by equating the expression of a bending moment to the zero. If you will do bending moment at xx is equal to zero, you will get the point of contra flexure. You can see here in the diagram, this is the point of contra flexure where positive sign changes into the negative. 
so this is the point of contra contra flexure in the bending moment you will see during the problem also what are the characteristics characteristics of a bending moment bending moment produces tension and compression in the cross section of a beam bending moment is inversely proportional to the radius of curvature bending moment is related to the deflection of the beam next one it is directly proportional to the pending stress different sub topics are there relation between the rate of loading shear force and bending moment at a section of a beam see this is a continuously or you can say the continuously repeated question relation between the rate of loading shear force and bending moment at a section of a beam see simply supported beam carrying a uniform distribu uniformly distributed load w per unit length you can see in this diagram udl is given simply supported beam is given supports at this point and this point now consider a small portion of the beam pq of the length dx at a distance x from the left hand support as shown in figure you can see this is the small section this one is a p here you can see the q and this one is the small distance that is a dx you can see here p and q udl is given this is m here m plus dm so load acting on the beam pq is equal to wx v that is shear force at point p you can see this one is a v shear force at p and v plus df that is shear force at q you can see here v plus dv at q and m is the bending moment at point p you can see here the bending moment at point p m plus dm is equal to m plus dm is equal to bending moment at q you can see here m plus dm since the element of beam pq is in equilibrium therefore it satisfied the condition of equilibrium we know that summation of fy is equal to 0 so v plus dv minus w into dx minus v is equal to 0 c here you can see the equation so dv is equal to w into dx so dv by dx is equal to w that is first equation just another condition summation of moment is equal to 0 the rate of change of shear force is equal to the intensity of load so dv by dx is equal to w now taking moment at q we know how to take moment see m is given see here you can see the m minus v into dx v is given so this one is a distant dx we are taking moment at q so we are taking moment here so v <coughs> minus sign minus v into dx here you can see minus v into dx it will move in the clockwise direction now next minus w into dx square by 2 here udl is given <coughs> in between p to q 
W into dx and it will act at a dx by 2 distance. So this will be W into dx into dx by 2. So W into dx square by 2. Minus m plus dm is equal to 0. Neglecting the square of small quantity dx square. So m minus v into dx minus m mi minus dm is equal to 0. So dm by dx is equal to minus v. Thus the rate of change of bending moment is equal to shear at a section. We know that for all for the maximum bending moment dm by dx is equal to 0. But from equation dm by dx is equal to minus v. For the maximum bending moment shear force is 0 but in actual practice the bending moment may be maximum when shear force changes its sign. This is very very important. There are some important points for shear force and bending moment diagram. Base of SFD and BMD is equal to length of the beam. The positive value of shear force and bending moment are plotted above the baseline and negative below the baseline. Next point, if there is no loading between any two section, the magnitude of shear force will not change between the given section and shear force diagram will be horizontal. If there is a vertical load or a reaction at any section, then shear force is great, uh, S is greater than F at the section will suddenly increase or decrease depending on the direction of vertical load. If there is UDL between two section, the shear force diagram is inclined line. If there is UVL, that is uniformly varying load between two sections, the shear force is shear force diagram is parabolic curve. Next important line: if there is a couple in loading diagram, there is no effect on its shear force diagram. Next variation of bending moment diagram is a straight line between any two section having point loads only. Variation of a bending moment diagram is parabolic for UDL. Variation of bending moment diagram is cubic for uniformly varying load. Bending moment diagram suddenly increase or decrease at any section having couple and it depends on the nature of couple. Bending moment at the free end or simple end support is always zero. In case of overhang beam, the point of contraflexure must be located. Bending moment at this point is equal to zero. Maximum bending moment occurs at a point where shear force is zero. See, these are the 14 important points while solving the problem on SFD and BMD. You have to read these 14 points again and again. I have given e-content. So you can see this table very carefully. The loading types are given. Then what will be the effect at shear force diagram and bending moment that is given. Refer this table very carefully. First case that is no load between two sections. In the shear force there will be a horizontal line. The bending moment there will be an inclined line. In the UDL between two sections, the shear force there will be an inclined line. In the bending moment there will be a parabolic curve. If uniformly varying load between two sections, then in the shear force diagram there will be a parabolic curve. 
and in the bending moment diagram there will be a cubic curve point load at a point then in the shear force diagram rise or drop at that point couple at point you can see the bending moment rise or drop at the point if internal hinges given no effect in sfd if internal hinge is given there is no effect in sfd but in bmd if it, for the internal hinges bmd is zero means at B, bending moment diagram it is zero this table is very very important by using this concept we can solve different numericals in the next video we will see the numerical on sfd and bmd thank you thank you very much